Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is my first PixInsight tutorial since Comet C2022 E3 ZTF will, will be making its closest approach to Earth here on February 1st, here in a couple days. I decided that I'd make a tutorial slash show you how uh, I process my recent Comet image. And this is just a light frame that's just got a, a, a stretch on it. I shot this on January 23rd. The telescope I'm using is a TS Optics 90 millimeter CF APO refractor. But what is neat about this image is that um, it was passing, the, as, as I was taking photos of this comet, it was passing uh, a galaxy here. This is NGC 5907. It's a uh, knife edge galaxy here. Let me zoom in extreme zoom in here. It's a knife edge galaxy um, that is about 50 million light years away. And so that's pretty cool that, that I was able to catch uh, the, the comet passing that. Because the galaxy was here, I ended up doing 28 five minute exposures, uh, 300 seconds a piece. And the way I'm going to process this, let's think of it in three steps. Uh, I'm since since I have a com oh, excuse me since I have a uh, galaxy in this image, I'm going to process this first by processing the stars only. I'm then going to process the galaxy, and there's another small galaxy here, and there's another one up here somewhere, and where the comet may be, it might be blocking its orientation right now, or it's very very faint. It's actually right here, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure what that what that galaxy is, but. So I will be processing the stars first, the galaxy ne next, and then the comet itself. Uh, so again, think of it in three steps, uh, step one, step two, and step three. Now, in order to, what I did to get my master light frame, and I'll just, actually I can just X out of this now, I don't need it. I used PixInsight's uh, weighted batch pre-processing script. And let it load up here. There it goes. <clears throat> I use the uh, WBPP script, and um, here's all my my biases, my darks, uh, my flat frames, and my light frames. Two of these light frames are actually um, bad. I had a, a mi minor tracking issue for about two exposures, um, so I only had 28 total for a total integration time of two hours and uh, 20 minutes, I believe, if my math is correct. Um, but yes, I use the weighted batch pre-processing script. makes these makes everything very easy. Um, I already have the light frame, so I'm not going to run through it. But that's this is how I was able to get my uh, combination of all, all my images for my one-shot color camera to make my master frame, master light frame. So I'm just going to exit out of this. And here is my uh, uh, master light frame. Now you can see here this big giant blob in the center is the comet that is, you know, because the comet doesn't move with the stars. Um, it moves um, well, um, kind of counter to the stars. So what I did is I tracked, obviously, for the stars because I wanted to get this image of this um, uh, galaxy. Of course, you can see here, and there's some other few little smaller galaxies in the background as well. But because the, the comet is moving counter to the stars, we're going to get this streaking. But we're going to be able to fix that using um, kind of this process here. So what I'm first going to do, this is the step one. I'm going to work on the stars only. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to process. I'm going to get rid of this green background here. I'm going to go to process. I like using Automatic Background Extractor. It's always worked very well. I use DBE, which is the Dynamic Background Extraction tool. Uh, I, I Most of the time I get the same results and this takes two or three clicks versus finding different object, or finding you know different slivers of background in your image. This tends to work very well. So I run this with a function degree of one because if you, you, you can run it a little bit more aggressively but the more aggressive you run it, you end up getting a weird like center gradient. So I run this with a just a function degree of one. And for target for target image image correction, we're just going to do subtraction. And because I don't need to really look at my background, I'm going to just go ahead and discard that. So we're going to take our little triangle and drop that on here. 
and this is working in real time. I have a M1 Mac Pro, um, which is now a generation old, but it works very, very quickly um, for most processes. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that, and actually my master for light frame, I always take it and I just put it in the corner up here. Uh, that way if I need to go back later, if I screw something up, I always can. Uh, I'm gonna put a stretch on this, so you can see what, what that did. Next, I'm going to color calibrate this image uh, using SPCC, Spectrophotometric Color Calibration. It's a mouthful, so I will refer to it SPCC. Um, for my white reference, I am actually going to, since the comet is reflecting um, the sunlight back, I'm going to um, uh, use the white reference of our own star the sun which is a G, g2v star because that way it'll give that uh, uh, a more color accurate uh, image there for the ideal qe curve i uh, quantum efficiency curve um, i like to use the sony sensor in which my asi 2600 has the uh, 571 sensor i leave everything the same I do keep background neutralization checked. And for region of interest, um, I will make a preview of some of the background. So I'll just zoom in and find a spot here with no stars and get me a little bit of a background image here. Doesn't need to be a very big one. Perfect. Select region of interest from preview and we will get that preview. So we'll hit okay. And now I will run um, Spectrophotometric color calibration. So we can color correct our image here. All right, that only, and that was real time. That only took 14 seconds. Um, these numbers right here, your, these white balance factors, you're going to want to write these down. In fact, I got a piece of paper here, so I will write these down so I can remember them. Um, later, once we we're going to use Star Exterminator to extract everything out of here. In fact, real quick, so you see, I'll add a new stretch to this. Since we're going to uh, color separate the comet from the stars, we want to be able to um, uh, color correct the comet. And since we're not actually we're actually going to use uh, individual comet photos to get the actual image of the comet. Um, so we're going to just want to save these white balance factors here so that we can um, accurately color correct that comet image later. So let me write those down real quick so I remember them. So we can close out of that. We can close out of spectrophotometric color calibration. Um, next, now that I'm color calibrated, I am going to use Blur Exterminator and I can actually get rid of this preview too. Um, Blur Exterminator is a third party um, process here. Uh, it costs $99, you can get it from RC Astro, but it is, it is very much worth it. Um, it's basically a deconvolution uh, software or process that uses AI to um, enhance your images. Um, it's, it, it works wonders. Um, so I'm gonna use Blur Exterminator here. I like to, def the default is set to 25. I've lately been running it down at about 15. It doesn't over sharpen or anything. And uh, I let it choose the automatic um, PSF uh, for this. It seems to have been working really fine for me. So I'm gonna drag and drop that onto here. All right, and see that made the stars a little bit smaller um, and then corrected any kind of uh, elongated stars that I had. In fact, we can show a before and after. Uh, pretty subtle, not doesn't overdo it and uh, looks good. So I'm done with that. Next, I'm going to extract the uh, uh, galaxy in this comet blur from this image. And to do that, I'm going to use Star Exterminator, or excuse me, yes, yeah, Star Exterminator, which is again another process from RC Astro. Um, this is simple as as long as you got your AI select and the generate star image 
selected, it is simple as dragging and dropping. All right, as you can see here, this made me a stars only image. I'm gonna exit out. It made me a stars only image and as well as the image of our galaxies here and the uh, big comet blur, which we will fix that in just a minute. Now you notice in my star image here, even though it did a great job of removing everything, there's still some residual um, effect here. Um, almost looks like a DNA spiral. There's still, still some of that residual effect here from removing um, the comment out of here. But what we're gonna do real quick is stretch this image so that we get a nice, um, nice just normal star field image here. For that, I'm just gonna go to processes. Histogram transformation. And real quick, I'm gonna change the name of this to stars. I want to make sure that stars is selected. Go to my preview here. I'm going to get rid of my auto stretch so that it's completely uh, darked out. And we're just going to lightly stretch this in, this uh, star image here. I'm going to run. Really, that looks just about right. What I right where I want it. You don't want to risk blowing out the stars and making them because they'll kind of halo. So. And see that's way too much um, you can see here that'd be way too much as well I want just enough and that probably would work there Let's do maybe one more stretch to see if um, see how that looks And there we go, we have a stretched star image here. So what I'm going to do now is fix, um, remove this, this residual here, this uh, from, X out of here, from the, um, when we remove the comet. And see there's that little galaxy that I was talking about, this tiny little galaxy there. So I'm going to go to processes, it is a clone stamp and uh, works very similar to the way Photoshop does um, just the radius of your your brush essentially essentially and you're gonna on the Mac hit command and click and that'll give you a um, a uh, little circle here and you can just paint over these um, these sections that you want to have cleaned up. So I'm going to take a minute here and I'll just fast forward it because I wanna, I'm gonna probably end up losing a few stars but it won't matter because the comet will be kind of covering them anyway. Um, but you definitely don't want this nasty looking uh, image here. So again, this works very much like Photoshop. Um, so I'm gonna just speed this up here and clean up this image. Alright, I've now done using the clone stamp process. One of the things before you exit out of the tool you're going to want to do is hit the green check mark and that will apply it to your image. So now we can exit out of the clone stamp tool and as you can see everything's been kind of cleaned up here in that corner uh, where the uh, comet was. Now if we zoom in a little bit we notice there's kind of a green tinge around the stars especially right here. That's some little residual galaxy and that's a little bit of the residual galaxy of um, NGC 5907. So in order to fix that, I'm going to go back to processes and go down to, to process, sorry, and go down to SCNR. And I'm going to remove that um, green tint from this image. Uh, I'm going to do it about 80 to maybe 90%. I'm going to save some of the green, not quite all of it. We'll fix the rest of it later. So I'll just simply drag and drop that on there. And you see how that cleaned that up. So now it has a much more natural color. Again, that's just part of the galaxy, but the stars don't have that kind of green halos around it. So with that, we are done with the first step here, and we have processed our stars. 
And now we're going to move to the galaxy image. All right, for the galaxy image, well, first I'm just going to minimize my stars over here and just put that over here so that I don't lose it. I'm gonna expand my galaxy image back. Um, the first thing that I'm gonna do on this is use RC Astro's noise exterminator to get rid of some of this noise here. So we'll go down to process and noise exterminator. Now, instead of running this at full, or the defaults here, I'm gonna run this at about 40%. I don't wanna um, overdo it, because it can kinda, if you run it at its full um, or default um, denoise option, it can kind of uh, blur the image a little too much. So I'm just gonna run it at 40%, leave the detail at 15. We'll see how this cleans this up, zoomed in here. And you can see that helped. There's still some noise there. That's fine. We're gonna we're gonna again run it later. Just kind of want to do an initial um, cleanup there. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stretch this image. Actually, I'm gonna also run a uh, background extraction just on this. So it's gonna be the exact same. Um, I'll I'll leave the uh, uh, background so we can look at it here. But I'm just gonna drag and drop it. stretch that out. You can see it did get rid of some of that background. Um, especially at the bottom, I noticed that there was a little bit lighter gradient. So I'll just minimize this one. This is our one with background uh, extracted on here. Yeah, you can see right here, and that actually part is going to get cropped out later, so not a big deal. Um, because it's the way that the, my images uh, over time kind of shifted. I had a little bit of a guiding error halfway through and uh, for some reason, um, basically my imaging train kind of drifted uh, a little bit. I think I actually had my guide camera set on the comment on accident, so I think that's why it did that, but not a big deal, we'll just crop that out. Um, so now I'm gonna run a stretch, or excuse me, um, yes, I'm gonna stretch using histogram transformation to basically expose and stretch for uh, this galaxy here. So we're gonna go to processes, Back, excuse me, process, um, back down to histogram transformation. And actually, I'm going to rename this one to Galaxy so that we have that one labeled properly. Make sure I choose the right view. Oh, click the circle to open up my preview, get rid of the stretch that's there. In fact, get rid of the stretch that's already on it. And now we will stretch for that Galaxy image. set it Let's zoom in on here and take a look at it Pretty content with that. You can see some of the detail that'll kind of pop back in once we get it um, added. I am going to run a quick CNR on this one as well. It helps kind of clean that back up. Now, I'm also going to clone stamp the galaxy out of here. So, much like we used earlier, I'll go to process clone stamp and we'll make my radius a little bit bigger because we're going to be removing um, this galaxy here. Sorry I had to click through slowly. I think that auto 75 auto work pretty well. Again we'll just hit command on our Mac keyboard here and we're just going to clean this up. So I'm going to speed through this uh, process as well. OK, 
Okay, now I have my galaxy image. I have the comet removed from there. So we can just set our galaxy aside. Because we're now ready to uh, process the comet, which will take a few more steps. All right, we're on step three. Now we're going to make our comet only image. Um, I, as I mentioned before, I had 28 original light frames to make, or excuse, yeah, 28 original light frames to make this image, but I'm only going to use about eight uh, of my comet uh, frames to make the comet image. Um, part of that is because, again, my image train did shift a little bit midway through, and then um, really those those eight images I found they are a little bit closer to this galaxy so it's only going to be in fact if we zoom in here that's where my image train screwed up and it's actually missing um, two different light frames but I'm going to be using these first eight uh, light frames to make this image it's going to make that ion tail a little bit sharper in hindsight I probably shouldn't have shot uh, five minute exposures but I really wanted to kind of get as much of that ion tail as possible so we'll just minimize that again. We're going to start with star exterminator because we're going to make some uh, starless comet only images. So we're going to go down to process, excuse me, process, uh, should note I'm using a laptop. So that's why if my mouse jumps off a little bit, it's because I'm trying to uh, do that that way. So I'm going to go to Star Exterminator, and the nice thing about Star Exterminator now is it has a uh, batch processing um, mode. So we're going to click. You would click on that, and since we want starless only, we don't need the star files. We can just click that. You can add. You can make a uh, designation folder for um, your star, your comet only photos, and that's. Uh, this is the Comet Stars photo, so if I go here and to Starless, I made a Starless uh, um, folder for mine. In fact, I think it's on the new Comet Align there, so you can see. Uh, I'm not going to run it because it does, it takes, even with my computer being pretty fast, it's, it does take to do about 10 images or 8 images. It still takes about an hour or so to do, but... All you would do is output those files to your uh, folder there and then open them up in comment, the comment align feature next. All right, so in order to do that, we're going to go to comment alignment. And now you would add your, your uh, starless comment files. I'm only going to do eight here. Open those up. Um, you would then, what you would then do is down here, click on show first image and then bring up your first image in your set here. You're going to click, uh, you're going to stretch it just so you can see it. And you're going to take your little arrow and just click on the center of the comet there. You'll then go to show last image. Do the same thing. We're gonna run a stretch on it and click on that one as well. You're gonna create a output directory. Um, I again, I've already done this, so I'm just kind of showing you again. You would then create an output directory and run this. Doesn't take very long at all. And what that will do is create a file list of common align photos. They'll have a CA at the end of them. So um, we're then going to go to, we're then going to, we're going to integrate these in um, and uh, make a common align image. So we'll go to image integration. We will add those now common align files and I have those set in a different folder. We'll add these in here. Uh, we're going to we're, we're going to set the image integration combination to average, and we're not going to do any rejection or anything like that. And we're just going to now integrate this comet align image, so we just have a comet only.
All right, when that's when the image integration is done, it's going to give you this new comet image here. And it's just of the comet. And of course, you got the few little galaxies that were left uh, in that original starless image. But what we're first going to do with this is we're going to run um, automatic background extractor. We're going to remove that background. Again, same settings as earlier. Here's our background. You can see it's just that green blob there. Take this image and put it over here. I always like to put my master files up here so that um, if I need to go back to them, I can. Now I'm going to color cal I'm going to put a quick stretch on here so you can see what I'm looking at. And now I'm going to color calibrate this image using those numbers that we wrote down earlier. So we'll go to processes again, go to color calibration and uh, reset this here. And what we'll do is instead of structure detection, we'll click manual white balance and we'll enter in those numbers that we had earlier and find them here. And now we will run that. We can see how that color corrected the image quite nicely. And on the stacked one, you can see now how I've got uh, some of the ion tail is visible here. It's not as bright as I'd like it to be, but that's, that's certainly fine. I'm going to now run Noise Exterminator on here as well. And again, run that at the, the 0.4 setting that I did earlier. That'll clean that image up just a little bit, and we'll run it again later. And now I'm going to use Histogram Transformation to uh, stretch this comet image and we're going to basically expose it for the comet so we'll go to histogram transformation and again let me name this one now comet click the circle give us our preview get rid of the stretch the auto stretch and now we begin the process of stretching this comet image out Right, I think I'm happy with that right there. Now you notice there are some streaks, obviously, from the galaxy, and then there's going to be some faint streaking kind of throughout here. Now you could create a star mask um, and kind of basically subtract that from here. And that's a little bit more of a complicated process, takes a few more extra steps. Uh, I've found now, at least since I'm only doing a combination of about eight images here, I found that just clone stamping this out works really well. And then when you integrate it in via pixel math with a certain formula, it's, it's like none of that's here. But you just got to make sure you clean these spots up pretty well. Again, this isn't quite cropped yet. That's fine. I'm going to leave it because we will crop that uh, bad spot, these, bad, these uh, bottom portions and stuff here afterwards. So I'm going to, again, get uh, my clone stamp tool out. and just kind of clean this image up like I did the other ones. So now what I'm going to do is use pixel math and I'm going to combine my comet and my um, galaxy image together. So I will go to process, all processes. Let's go down to pixel math. Oops, nope, wrong, click the wrong one. Again, using a laptop, so it's a little bit not as easy with a the mouse. There we go. And I will close Comet Flex Galaxy. And I will make sure that create new image. I like to always create a new image. Uh, make sure that's selected. Why did it fail? Oh, oops. Got to spell galaxy right. And there we go. I now have a comet and galaxy image. Minimize these two. 
I'm going to name this one Combo. Okay. Whoops. Name the wrong one. I'm going to name this one Combo. Now I'm going to combine my combo image here of the comet and galaxies with my stars. Again, using pixel math. Uh, this time, it'll be a little bit different formula. It'll be max, parentheses, stars, and combo. Again, we're going to make sure we select it, create new image. And it's important to note, whatever you decide to name your individual um, panels of photos, you just want to make sure that those match. Like I said, mine is stars for the stars and combo because I'm mixing the combination of uh, galaxy and the uh, comet with it. So I'm going to run that. And there we go. We're left now. We're left with this new image of everything combined. You can see in the background there is a little bit of the streaking. It's not horrible because we're also we're going to fix that. I'm first going to give this a crop to crop out those uh, darker areas. Let's go to dynamic crop. I'm now going to use the histogram transformation tool to fix my background just a little bit. And basically I'm going to use this just to uh, crush my blacks a little bit. I've got a little bit of space here which will be, I'll be able to kind of crush my background just a little bit. Again, we want to darken it just a little. There we go. And there we go. We have a pretty nice image here. You see you got a good amount of detail in the galaxy. Not bad for about two hours of integration on a galaxy that's 50 million light years away. And of course, here on the actual comet itself, I can see the split ion tail along with the um, anti, anti tail on the front of the comet. In fact, actually, I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to go down to curves, curves transformation, and I'm going to add just a little bit of saturation and maybe just a little bit of brightness try to fix this uh, uh, image just a little bit more. I'm going to go to the saturation tab here on the curves transformation. You can see if I pump it up too much, it adds way too much saturation. So I'm just going to bring up just a little bit, put a little bit more color in those stars and in that galaxy as well. There, I think that's fine about right there. We click the little before and after circle over here. See, there's just a very subtle change, very subtle. Um, before I click the square button here, I think I am going to just do a little bit of curves. Just bring up my mids just a little bit, make a little S curve here, and just drop the shadows again, and as well as, well as my highlights. And I'll f I'm going to I'm about to bring this image into Photoshop, and I'll be able to edit this just a little bit more. Again, very subtle changes. Brings out just a little bit more detail in that uh, ion tail there. All right, with those pics in sight, edits done. I'm now going to save this as a TIFF file. Save as comment E3. Save this as a TIFF file. As 
a 16-bit TIFF file here so that I can then bring that photo into Photoshop and uh, finish out some of these uh, color correction edits. Um, Pix and Sight's a very powerful tool, but uh, I find that Photoshop makes these things just a little bit easier. So we're gonna switch over to there now. All right, I now have my image over here in Photoshop and it may not translate through your computer screen or through um, YouTube, but I can kind of see that in the background, there's, it's a little bit warmer than I would like. It's kind of got a almost a light yellow kind of um, hue to it. So what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to go to the color balance um, layer here. And I always start with my shadows and I'm just gonna add just a little bit of blue um, to the shadows. And I'm going to kind of mess with these different um, sliders here, uh, the different colors, and just kind of color correct this image a little further. Personally, and everybody's different, but I like to have my astro images, the background, just a just a hint of blue, make them a little cooler. Um, just a, to me, that's it looks looks a little bit better. So I'll mess with these tabs here just to get a little bit of different color correction. And you can see I didn't do much to them, but you can tell if I turn this tab off, how that kind of fixed the background. Maybe now it's a little bit more how it's kind of a reddish yellow color. And then if I turn it back on, it turned that background to a nice, um, kind of almost more of a neutral black, but with just a hint, just a hint cooler uh, in color temperature. I'm gonna continue that with the highlights. Might add just a little bit of, that adds a little bit more blue to the star, to the brighter stars and to this, um, the kind of this luminosity of this comet here. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that color though that it's coming out, that's coming out here. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually go to levels and I'm just gonna bring the brightness of this up just a little bit. I mean, just, just a little bit by maybe a fourth of a stop, if that. Again, you can see my difference here. Maybe even just a little less than that. You can always type in the value too if you can. There we go. And now one of the last things that I like to do here in Photoshop is actually use uh, the camera raw filter because it's a pretty powerful tool here. And of course it'll bring the image up as it originally looked. But I can also, since this is a little bright here, I can adjust the highlights just a little bit. I won't do too much because obviously it brightens or dims the uh, overall brightness of the image of the stars. But I can just dim that galaxy a little, or galaxy rather, the comet a little bit. In fact, if I don't want to do a little bit on there overall, can actually make a little mask here the brush tool Maybe change the size here sorry again I'm using a laptop so I'm trying to use a brush and make a mask tool of that and now I can decrease the highlights I have to select mask. Now I can decrease the highlights just a little bit more. You don't want to do too much because then it becomes you don't want to do too little either. Just a little bit. Just to fix kind of that overall brightness there. I may add just a smidge of vibrance and saturation just to bring a little, tiny bit more color out. I don't want to do too much. Typically, I won't mess with the texture any because then it becomes just too digitally uh, enhanced and just looks awful. Same with the clarity. I don't typically mix it, even though it will bring a little bit more detail into that ion tail. I don't want to risk, um, without having to sit there and mask it, um, I don't want to miss putting in too much you know, noise into that tail there. 
and I might just bring the dehaze up to one just to fix that background just a little bit more. I will add just a little bit of sharpening. I do this to all my photos. I do this actually to even just photos from my mirrorless camera as well. I always set that to 20. And if you notice, there is a little bit of color noise still here. Usually anywhere from 15 to 20 works without bringing uh, your overall saturation down. And you can actually see, again, if I delete that, how it got rid of some of that extra color noise there. It actually looks pretty good. And now the last thing that I'm going to do is fix the, the little bit of distortions that I have in my um, telescope lens. It's kind of bubbled out. You can't maybe not be able to tell, but once I usually bring the distortion either minus one, or excuse me, plus one or plus two, and that helps fix that kind of that, that barrel distortion a little bit. Um, I've always, always just like the look, um, kind of shrinks the center in a little bit too. So with that, I'm done. I'm very happy with that image, the way that looks. So now just to fix this last little bit out, I'll crop my um, little distortion fix that I did there in camera raw. All right, with that, I am now done editing my image. I love the comet's colors here. You zoom in, see that ion tail, the anti-tail. Pretty good amount of detail in the galaxy there. So yeah, that is how I usually edit um, a lot of my astro photos. I start them in PixInsight. Um, of course, with the comet, I split it into three different steps. First, editing the stars then the galaxy, then the comet itself, and then combining them. And then I always finish off in Photoshop and do some last minute little color correction and tweaks so I can get that kind of that look and uh, kind of color balance that I like in my astro images. So thank you guys for watching this video. I um, hope you enjoyed it. And I hope it helps you um, process your comet photos. I'm gonna be making more videos like this in the near future. So please consider liking the video and subscribing. And with that, I'll catch y'all in the next video.